Vital Hoops, 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 Vital is a proud media partner of the ITEL Food Fest. Make sure you go to itelfoodfest.com right now and get your ticket for the upcoming epic inaugural ITEL Food Fest, which will be held in Jamaica this November 25th. If you want more information, definitely check out our previous episode, episode number 43 of the Bottle Hoops podcast, featuring my brother, Chef Troy, you know what I mean? An amazing ITEL chef who will be present at the ITEL Food Fest. Um, yeah, definitely make sure you go check out that episode. And as, as I said, go to ITELFoodFest.com right now. Listen, also on November 25th, the Pan-African Universities organized by the Pan-African League Umoja, the LPU, will be held in Paris. Make sure you go to the website right now. Everything is down in the description. And um, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. There's gonna be an international panel. We're gonna get into some serious discussions. Um, anybody who's serious about Pan-Africanism and is around uh, Paris should get there. So yes, November 25th is a big day. Um, now that we got that out of the way, it is November already. And November is Hip Hop Appreciation Month, right? So we just celebrated 50 years of hip hop and uh, it is Hip Hop Appreciation Month. It is also International Vegan Month. So shout out to all my hip hoppers, shout out to all my vegan brothers and sisters. So since it is a Hip Hop Appreciation Month, we're gonna talk hip hop, you know what I mean? This is the Bottle Hoops podcast. So we're definitely gonna talk hip hop, you know, the whole festivities came and went for 50 years of hip hop. Um, that was pretty global. I heard of festivities, you know, back in Cuba. I heard of obviously a lot of festivities in the United States. There wasn't much going on in France, but you know, there were a couple of things. Um, you know, and the question of a lot of people are asking, what are we celebrating? You know, because the condition of our people, you know. It's still where, where it's at today, the condition of African people, the condition of the people who invented this culture. Um, personally, when it comes to hip hop, I always say the same thing. Don't confuse the culture with commercial rap, right? So there's hip hop culture, and then there is the rap industry, you know, which is against the culture, actually, right? It's not working for the people, it's against the culture and against the people. The culture always has to be for the people. That's what the culture is about. So hip hop is hip hop. Hip hop will always be hip hop. It is what it is. Me personally, um, <clears throat> the reason I, can, I, I am who I am today is partially because of hip hop. You know, the way I, I got to my black consciousness, the way my politics got radicalized, all that came through hip hop. You know, if it wasn't for hip hop, um, I might not even be, I might not even be vegan. I might not be a Pan-Africanist, you know, a lot of my consciousness came through hip hop and um, hip hop will forever be my culture. You know, I'm a hip hop artist and hip hop is my culture. Today, my son enjoys the music. You know, he loves, he loves um, graffiti. You know what I'm saying? He likes art and um it continues, you know, hip hop will always be a part of me. But as far as celebrating hip hop, I feel like a lot of people took it, obviously the commercial route. And uh, I think I said this on a previous episode, but too many MCs just really just took the opportunity to just sell more, whatever, sell something. Or like, yeah, we're celebrating hip hop. So here 50% off or whatever. But anyway, um, the Vital Hoops podcast definitely had a three-part series on that you know, celebrating 50 years of hip hop. So definitely go back and check that out if you have a chance. But I think, you know, overall, one of the main problems we have today with 
hip hop is that, you know, the money's not going back to the community. Um, many, many aspects of hip hop, different elements are producing a lot of money worldwide. They're making, a, they're creating a lot of opportunities, making a lot of money. A lot of people are due, due to hip hop. And, you know, the money's not going back to the communities. It's not going back to where it, where, to where it all started in the hoods, in the street, you know, with the people. So that's definitely one of the problems. Another one, another one is that today I feel like, like I said, you know, hip hop culture is dope. I'm going to get into all that in a little bit. It always has been. It always will be because the culture lives with the people and the culture is always about pushing forward. But the rap industry, you know, the commercial aspect of it might be at an all time worse. I know a lot of people always say the same thing throughout every generation. People believe, oh, this is the worst, but it is really bad. And one of the main reasons for that is that, you know, with all that's going on today, you know, it's been going on for years, but today it's very visible and there's a lot, a lot of oppression going on. And, you know, I want to say free Palestine, you know, free Haiti, free the Congo, free Sudan, you know, just to mention a few places. And, you know, the industry is not vocal at all about that. Obviously, we know why we understand why. But at some point, I feel like there were more even commercial rappers that would speak up against apartheid, you know, and other serious issues. But today, with all this going on, there's almost 95% of, of commercial rappers um, quiet, just quiet, not saying shit, you know. So that's another thing that I feel that is that is bad. But... Since it is Hip Hop Appreciation Month, I don't want to focus on the negative. You know what I mean? Um, there is this whole thing that happened with D1, you know, calling out rappers like Nick Mill, Rick Ross, you know, Jim Jones, he called them out. And then they answered saying that, you know, they do a lot. They do a lot for the community. You know, they do a lot for, 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 for their neighborhood, this and that. But they're going to continue pushing the bullshit. Jim Jones answered, I saw an interview with Sway. He looked like a little kid, just mad, just an angry little kid. You know, just some immature shit. And that's another problem, you know, with these commercial rappers. They're not growing lyrically. You know what I'm saying? They're saying the same shit. How many times can you say you got the most dough and you kill a nigga and you got the baddest bitch? You know what I'm saying every fucking track. I'm not gonna lie, that new track, that new Meek Mill and, and 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 Rick Ross, Shaq and Kobe, the beat is fucking banging. That shit is cold blooded. The beat is cold blooded. You know what I'm saying? But they're saying the same shit again. You know, and Dane Dollar came on the track, and he's a dope MC. He can really rhyme, yo. A, a dope ball player and dope MC. But guess what? Guess what he's talking about? Got mad dope. Only fucks with the baddest bitches. Same old shit, man. Same old shit. So good MCs using their talents. Because some of these dudes are really nice. But they just saying the same bullshit over and over. Shit that's not constructive. Shit that's not helping us build. That's not elevating our minds. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, they, a lot of rappers like to come up with the whole thing. They like to say, yeah, you know. I'm not a role model, you know, don't listen to me, don't let your, your little kids, that's all bullshit, man. We all know the influence these dudes have on the youth, have a lot of influence. Whatever they say, the youth, especially when the beat is banging, when the beat is hot, you listen to that shit, it plays in your mind, whatever they saying, it plays in your mind, you know what I'm saying? The next thing you know, it's going to influence you, it's going to influence the way you are, it's going to influence what you do, without a doubt. So, miss me with the bullshit. But like I said, I don't want to focus on the negative. Hip Hop Appreciation Month, we're going to focus on the positive. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to share with y'all the five albums I've been listening to the most lately. Five albums that I really enjoy that I've been listening to. And they're going to be down in the description. The link, the link is going to be down in the description, you know, a YouTube link. So y'all can check these albums out. But I definitely, definitely suggest you buy these albums. 
You know what I'm saying? Go on whatever platform it is that you listen to this shit, whatever platform it is that you listen to music on, and buy these albums because these are artists that are worth supporting. You know what I'm saying? These are artists that, you know, that are doing it right, that are doing it for the culture. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that that bullshit rap, okay? So this is, you know, for Hip Hop Appreciation Month, we gonna, you know what I'm saying? Talk about this dope music. Okay, so there's not no, you know what I'm saying? It's not no particular order. There's more artists that I really enjoy. This is just the five albums that I've been really, you know, listening to lately. And so I want to big up, you know, the artists, the producers, whatever, um, and recommend the albums to, to, to all of you. Okay, so the first album is uh, Why Is The Dome? Okay, Why Is The Dome by Rakim Shabazz and Furious Styles. Okay, now this album is really dope. It's got a, it's got a lot of artists that worked on it. There's, there, there's many artists that work on that worked on it. I'll let y'all check it out. I'm not gonna start mentioning artists, um, but the album is really dope. It has a real like classic boom bap sound to it. You know what I'm saying? Which is obviously something I love. Definitely recommend this album to all the hip hop heads. You're gonna enjoy it. It's, you know, black consciousness with boom bap. Um, no devils in hell. They're all here. That's probably my favorite track on there. That shit go hard. I See You Well, I also enjoyed that track, you know what I'm saying, with a dope sample on there. But pretty, but yeah, like I said, the whole album is dope. Check that one out. Why Is The Dome? And I actually had my brother, Rakim Shabazz, from Why Is The Dome and Why Is The Dome TV. Shout out to Why Is The Dome TV. Um, Rakim Shabazz was on the Bottle Hoops podcast, um, episode 18. So definitely go back and check that out. Episode 18, we spoke a little bit. Um, back then about the you know the Kyrie Irving situation and all that but yeah um definitely check that out but the second album I want to recommend is Miles Garvey by Skip Coon now Skip Coon is a really dope hip-hop artist underground hip-hop artist he's mad low-key um but I, I I heard of him through you know Black Power Media actually watching Black Power Media he has a show on there with, with with bro Diallo. So I was like, man, let me check, let me check out his music, man. So and, and I listened to this album, Miles Garvey, I believe that's the name of his seed. It's the name of his son. And um it was really dope, yo. Like this this guy's kid Coon, man, he's a he's an MC. He be spitting like the way he controls his flow and his voice, the way he projects everything. It's really dope. And the and the album is like a pan-African, you know, the lyrics are, you know, powerful powerful i really recommend that album I, it's the same thing like you could play all the way through and um you know musically um it's not usually what i listen to but he's so dope as an mc everything his cadence everything that you know i really enjoyed it actually so definitely check that one out skip coon uh miles garvey then i want to recommend marcel p black Shout out to Marcel P. Black, another Pan-Africanist MC. Uh, the EP is called More Culture. It's a short EP, but it's really dope. It has a track on there called Negroes with Gun, uh, Negroes with Guns 2, which really goes hard. And uh, Minister Servers on the intro. Uh, yeah, it's a really dope, dope EP. Definitely check that one out. And Marcel P. Black was on the Vital Hoops podcast on episode 37 which was part three of a three-part series, like I said, celebrating 50 years of hip-hop. So his episode was Pan-Africanism and hip-hop. So go back and check that out. Episode 37 of the Bottle Hoops podcast. We had a, a real good talk. Shout out to Marcel P. Black. Another one is uh, The Price of Bread by Ness, N-E-double-S. -S. Uh, this shit is hard. He has a, a track on there, which actually has a, a video, Illegal Business. Featuring Coach Nim, who's another dope MC that I really enjoy um, listening to. You know, Coach Nim. I started listening to him uh, uh, a few years back. You know, when he started working with with Stick Up Dead Press, and so I kind of be following what he's been doing. He's a really dope MC. But this Ness album, The Price of Bread, is really dope. Ness is, I believe he's, I believe he's a, 
He's an underground MC. I believe he's from Philly. Uh, Sell Our Pain is another dope joint in there that I really like. But yeah, check that one out as well. And the last one I want to recommend is, you know, my brother Boca Floja. He's a super dope MC. You know what I'm saying? It's in Spanish, though. It is in Spanish. Uh, but Boca is, is uh, he's not just an MC. You know what I'm saying? He's not just an artist. He's a multidisciplinary artist, but he's more than that. You know, he's uh, he's active. He's out there. He's doing it. He's doing it for the people, for the culture. And, well, pretty much all of these artists are, I believe, you know, and this is what really makes their music real and dope and, and you know what I'm saying? But anyway, Boca Floja was uh, on the on the uh, Billboard Top 50, Top 50 uh, Best Rappers in Spanish, for whatever that's worth. You know what I'm saying? Fuck billboards. But anyway, it's still a, a nice accomplishment. You know, he definitely deserves it, uh, in my opinion. Shout out Boca Floja. A shout out Sociedad Cimarrona. Um, but yeah, the album is called Después de Mañana. And um, like I said, Boca Floja is a very dope MC. His style is like laid back, smooth, melodic. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he's talking some real shit. Uh, my favorite track on there is probably Phenomian. Um, but yeah, listen to it. Even if you don't speak Spanish, you're still going to feel the vibe. And um, Boca was on the, he was on the Vada Hoops podcast episode 10. So go back and check that out. My room talk. So yeah, those are just five albums that I've, that I've really enjoyed that I've been listening to lately. Please let me know what you think right here in the comments, you know, in the, in the description, you're going to have all the, the links. Uh, let me know what you think. Reach out, you know, uh, go and buy these albums, support these 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 artists. And um, also, I do want to mention one of my favorite groups of all time, Dead Prez, just dropped a single. If you're a, a, if you're a real hip hop fan, you probably know that by now. Uh, but the single is called Payback and it's featuring Michael Rose. But, you know, Michael Rose of the of the great legendary reggae group, Black Uhuru. So yeah, the, the, the single is called Payback and it's uh, basically about re reparations, but it's really dope. It's a revolutionary track. You know, it's definitely what, what real hardcore hip hop fans like myself expected. Uh, so shout out to, to Dead Press, much respect. You can go to deadpress.com and, and get that and get the single, you know what I'm saying? Download it for free. And uh, yeah, it's really dope. I can't wait for them to drop an album. I believe they will drop an album. Uh, next year, 2024. I think I heard M1 say that in an interview. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you check out the Gorilla Republic 20th Anniversary Mixtape, the Love and Sacrifice Mixtape. It's on GorillaRepublic.org. I'm going to have the link down there as well. You know, um, shout out Gorilla Republic Worldwide. Shout out Gorilla Republic Cuba. The Fan 340MS. Everybody, much respect. Before I go, I have a book recommendation today. Um, I was listening to Wise Intelligent. You know, Wise Intelligent, also one of my favorite MCs of all time. Wise Intelligent, a legendary group, Poor Righteous Teachers, which, by the way, is almost never in hip-hop documentaries because we know why when they do all these hip-hop documentaries for 50 years of hip-hop, they don't show... Poor Righteous Teachers, they don't show the coup, you know, they barely show even Dead Prez, you know what I'm saying, but we know why, but um, yeah, um, shout out to, to Wise Intelligent, much respect, but I heard him say on an interview lately, you know, he was talking about reading and educating ourselves, and he was saying how he attributes his love um, for books and for reading to the 5% nation. So I thought that was dope for him to, to talk a little bit about that. And so, yeah, my book recommendation is his book. You know what I'm saying? Book that Wise Intelligent wrote. It's called Three Fifth and MC, The Manufacturing of a Dumbed Down Rapper. Get that, check it out, read it. Let, let the Vital Hoops podcast know what you think about the book about these, these albums and EPs and mixtapes we spoke about today on the show. And um, 
that's it. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for listening, for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Go to bottlehoops.net. Hit us up, bottlehoopspodcast at gmail.com. Check out the description. Like I said, I got all these albums and mixtapes linked. Um, don't forget, I tell Food Fest. You know what I'm saying? November 25th, Pan African University. Okay. And like I said, go to vitalhoops.net. Vital Hoops is for the culture. Woohoo.